Hello and welcome to this next part of our demonstration where we show how to deploy a TKG management cluster through the UI onto a vSphere infrastructure. Now in previous demonstration, we set up the IAS provider, we selected our vSphere environment. Now we're going to go through the management cluster settings and the NSX advanced load balancer integration. So to begin with, section two, talks about management cluster settings. You can see that you have two options here, a development cluster or a production cluster. The big difference is in the number of nodes that make up the control plane. Here you can see a single control plane is what's used for the development cluster, three control planes used in production. We will just go ahead and do the development with a single control plane. Now you can see the size of the uh, virtual machines that you're going to build for your Kubernetes cluster nodes. Uh, the resources that are involved there, uh, there are four options. Uh, you can see them there for yourself, small, medium, large, extra large, and they have different sizes of CPU, memory, and disk space. I am just going to select a small one for the purposes of this demonstration. Now we come to management cluster name. Management cluster name is optional, but if you're deploying a lot of management clusters, you may wish to give it something that's easily identifiable. Uh, I'm just going to call it MGMT1. The other thing here that's already enabled are machine health checks, and these are just health check monitoring on the virtual machines or the nodes that you deploy as part of your management cluster. Of more interest then is the control plane endpoint provider. So this is basically how you access the Kubernetes cluster. There are two options. One is kubevip. Uh, that's been around for some time. It's been in previous releases of TKG as well. If you choose kubevip, you have to manually provide a control plane endpoint IP address. The other option we now have in TKG 1.4 is the NSX Advanced Load Balancer. If you choose this option, a control plane endpoint is optional because the NSX Advanced Load Balancer will take care of that for you. Uh, the worker node instance type is basically populated from here. It's matching up the instance type. Great, so we have decided to do NSX Advanced Load Balancer. If that's the case, we then need to go ahead and populate a bunch of information about the NSX Advanced Load Balancer. So you can see here, it's going to look for a uh, the NSX Advanced Load Balancer uh, FQDN or IP address, a username password, but also a certificate of authority. So let's go ahead and fill that in to begin with. Uh, I'll give a username and I will give the password, but I actually need to go on to the load balancer itself to pick up the CA. So let me just show you in here that there are various views that we have uh, for the, uh, the load balancer. Where you find the uh, SSL TLS certificate is under templates, security, SSL TLS certificates, and this would have been created, it is self-signed, but it would have been created as part of the deployment of the NSX Advanced Load Balancer. You can see a little icon here, looks like an export. If you do that, it opens up a configuration here with the key and certificate. We actually want the certificate part, so I can copy it to the clipboard, pop back to my UI, paste it in, and verify the credentials. And if that goes to verified, we're good to go. Uh, the credentials, or well, at least the host, the username, password, and the CA are all good. So there is another section that we now need to populate, but notice that each of these does appear to have a drop down. So the cloud name is default cloud. And just to show you what the default cloud is, I can go back here and I can go and look at the infrastructure. And if I look at clouds, my vCenter vSphere ESX cloud is called default cloud. That's what that's matching up with. And also if we have a look at the service engine group, it's called default group, and that's what matches the service engine group here. Great, so uh, then we come to networks. You can see there's an awful lot of networks to choose from here, but again, you can go back to your infrastructure, look at the networks, look at the ones that have been configured. Uh, the one that I want to use is VM62DPG. So again, if I come back here for the VIPs, which are essentially the load balancer IP addresses, I'm going to select VM62DPG to match there. And the management VIPs and the workload VIPs, they tend to follow one another. The CIDR, 
it should be automatically available as well. You can see they match up too. And all going well, click next, you get onto the next section of the deployment. So with that in mind, we have now completed the management cluster settings. We have now completed the NSX advanced load balancer settings. Uh, we will now conclude this part of the demonstration. And uh, thank you very much for watching.